Ladies and gentlemen, please, if you would be so kind to return to the party. With all this excitement out here... I believe that is an end to the excitement, as you put it, Monsieur Demir. Oh, thank God. One last match. Bonjour, Monsieur Hagen. I wondered when you would be arriving. At least now you can do your job. Pardon, monsieur. I have just been assaulted! I want him arrested! I am afraid it is not as simple as that. I merely witnessed you standing up from the ground. This is ridiculous. You know very well what he did. Uh, perhaps you could elaborate on what instigated the altercation. I should have known you wouldn't make things easy. I have met Monsieur Demir. He does not seem one to physically assault someone unless provoked. I hope you're not implying that I started it. I am only stating what I have seen. I was having a private conversation with Angeline. When he interrupted and struck me, that is all there is to know. I would not act any other way. Well, unless I am provoked. You have grown rather close with the Vandenbosch family, it seems. What has my relationship with the family got to do with anything? Why are you even here, officer? Detective. And I was invited by Mademoiselle Angeline, personally. Seems to be mistake after mistake with that girl. thug like him doesn't need an excuse. Just seeing my face was probably reason enough to assault me in his mind. With a limited brain like he has, he would only have heard what he wanted to anyway. Officer Poirot, are you going to do something about him or not? It is Detective Poirot. And if you refuse to answer my questions, I do not see how I can continue. I just don't know what she sees in him. Angeline could do so much better. I don't think she realizes what she is getting herself into. I can't imagine her living a happy life with that... rogue. I see. Merci, monsieur, for your honest opinion, whether I agree or not. I shall leave you to your cigar and return to the party. Monsieur Sterling, I trust the preparations are progressing since our last meeting. Please, Detective. Archibald is fine. Everything is in order now. Are you ready to join the party? You are head butler of this house. It is a position that warrants respect, and I shall continue to give it. 
Monsieur Sterling. And I must admit, it is the smell from the kitchen that has my attention more than the party itself. Rehana is quite the cook, but it will still be some time. Maybe you'd like to enjoy a drink while you wait? Some of the guests are already in the salon to your left. And the remaining guests are in the library on the first floor. I will be sure to explore both. Merci. Dinner will be served in the dining room, but the rest of the evening is yours to enjoy. Uh, you have all certainly been working hard, it seems. Oh, very hard. The lady of the house wanted everything a certain way, and that's how it was to be done. It is my responsibility to look after the house and staff, not to resolve petty disputes. I cannot imagine he will be in any mood to attend the party. He often has a cigar to calm down, and if that doesn't relax him, that temperature outside surely will. Merci. You have been most helpful. Monsieur Demir, we meet again. What did I tell you? Call me Zach. You found your room all right then? I did, and a charming room it is. <laughs> I don't know if I would call mine charming, but if I drink enough, it won't matter. Uh, I'm sure he's fine. You don't need to worry about him. Always the knight in shining armor. Riding in to save the day. Saving the day from who, exactly? Well, if Gedeon is the knight in the fairy tale, Felix is the dragon. Felix the Major! Ha! <laughs> Always there, thinking he is better. Just because he was a major, we all know how he got there. In his mind, that puts him at the top of the chain. That's okay. At least you actually care. Not like most of the others here. I'm the groom-to-be's older, more handsome brother. Ah, we. Oui. I see the resemblance now. How wonderful that you can celebrate this occasion together. I'll stop you there. The only wonderful thing about this celebration is the free food and drink. You are not pleased for your brother. Uh, Angeline seems nice enough, but marriage is not for me. What is there to gain from tying yourself to someone for the rest of your life? Besides the money. Recently, not a great deal. Well, <laughs> except for enjoying myself. I was once a field medic in the military. But those days are over. A noble occupation. Did you not want to make it your career? It wasn't my decision to make. I certainly don't miss the battlefield, <laughs> that's for sure. Perhaps it is best I take my leave.
Madame Vandenbosch, congratulations are in order on your daughter's engagement. Thank you. And you are? Detective Poirot. I'm sorry, the name eludes me. Once, Officer Poirot, I investigated your daughter's missing bracelet. Oh, it's you. There is no missing jewellery here today, so we are really not in need of your services. I am here on a rather more pressing... I know why you are here, officer, detective, whatever you are now. Please, just get on with it. Detective, and I promise not to keep you too long. Angeline is her own woman now. She can fight her own battles. She does not need her husband to be stepping in. And what battles would they be? Nothing that concerns you, detective. Sister, keep your volume down! She had no right to do such a thing. As soon as the other ladies get wind that there was a police officer in house, the whole town will know. Perhaps you should be more focused on catching the blackmailer that is holding your family's name to ransom than what the chattering women of the town will say. I care more about what those chattering women, as you so rudely describe them, have to say than the empty threat of an anonymous letter. Your daughter does not agree. In fact, it has been suggested that one of tonight's guests may know more than they are willing to show. The guests? You mean our friends? You can't honestly believe one of them would be so petty to send a letter like that. Oh, officer, you have not changed. I suppose it is only polite to say you're welcome. Madame is as quick-witted as I remember. What a shame there is nothing as memorable about you but your lack of respect. What do you mean, protecting? She hasn't gone and paid that silly ransom, has she? It was Monsieur Demir that accepted the cost. He paid it because your daughter believes there may be something to hide. For heaven's sake! Why do you think it was addressed to her and not I in the first place? Because they knew I would throw it in the rubbish where it belongs. Madame, if there is something you are keeping, it would be wise to tell me now. It may help in identifying the culprit. And it would be wise for you to stay out of my family's business. If I require your help, I shall ask for it. But don't hold your breath. Merci. An enchanting conversation, as always. Allow me to introduce myself. Hercule Poirot. Detective Hercule Poirot? I heard we were being joined by one of the King's finest officers. Oui, madame. I see my name precedes me. Comtesse Margot de Vos. Charmed, I'm sure. It is I who is charmed. Handsome, well-mannered, and a man of the law. I did not expect such a fine caliber of gentleman at this party. Countess, your compliments are enough to make a young detective blush. I have been a close friend to the Vandenbosch family for, well, heaven knows how long. You must have known the late Viscount then. Indeed, we had been friends since our school days. His passing was very hard on both Cassandra and young Angeline. I became a sort of protector of them both after his death. A guardian angel, if you will. I fill my time mostly with charity work. The number of those less fortunate only continues to grow. 
How very admirable. One must remain humble. You will find Felix at the center of any trouble, especially when it concerns the ladies of the house. I understand he has made himself quite at home here. <laughs> what an understatement! He thinks his friendship with Cassandra entitles him to anything and everything in the house, including certain opinions of how young Angeline lives her life. He does not approve of Monsieur Demir. You'd have to ask him. Or rather, speak with Gédéon's brother. He will have something to say about Felix, I am sure. A strapping young man. Angeline has found herself a good one. They certainly make a handsome couple. Speaking with them both, it is plain to see, even to one that is unexperienced in such emotions, that there is a great deal of love between them. When they are together, it is obvious for all to see, even at such a young age. But who are we to judge what the heart wants? It has been a pleasure conversing. I look forward to our next tête-à-tête. -tête. Let's make this quick, detective. You can make whatever assumptions you wish. Based on several accounts, it seems as though the Major has a certain level of disdain for him and his brother. Felix is merely protecting both my daughter and the Van den Bosch name. Protecting them from what exactly? That is a question best asked to them. Gideon is a fine, educated young man from a well-respected family. All important when considering a new son-in-law. A good home and education speaks volumes about a man. Even in the short time they have been engaged, his noble character is obvious. If you were an educated man, you would know that. I can assure you, madame, my education is not one to be sneered at. And yet you remain a mere detective. Perhaps it is your choices, then, that are to be questioned. Merci. An enchanting conversation, as always. Fire away, detective. The major pain in the ass. Why should I? It doesn't take a detective to work out the sort of man he really is. You must have seen it, right? I have my own history with the major, but that is a story best not told. I think it's a story best told now. It can't be any worse than what he did to us during the war. You fought together in the war? We were on opposing sides. 
The subject of war is a difficult topic for everyone. Perhaps it is best to discuss something else. If you had seen what I have, what he has done, you wouldn't side with him. I am taking no sides, monsieur. It is just not conversation fit for a party. Perhaps it is best I take my leave. I told you, you're barking up the wrong tree. I'm not a reporter. But you're going to want to hear this. You could interview me now. And why would I want to spend my evening doing that? The world needs to know. You want to sell papers, I want the truth to be known. Win-win. Mm, I came here to enjoy myself, not to hear a second string version of... I was there. I saw the whole thing, including who was ruining the show. All right, I'll bite. Let's talk later. Huh. Allow me to introduce myself. Hercule Poirot. Hugo Beckers. A pleasure. I hope I am not disturbing you. I often find myself at a loose end at parties such as these. I've never been referred to as a loose end before. But it is always good to make a new acquaintance. There is no better way to understand one's purpose in life. I stand up for the workers that cannot do it themselves. You work with a union. Union leader, well, that is my formal title. But I see myself as more than just that. So much more. I am the face of the people. A voice in the void when there is none. Very spirited. You have quite the way with worlds. In my line of work, it is essential. Some fight with their fists, but I believe words are the ultimate weapon. I have been working with Gideon for quite some time. We are doing great things together. Great things. I was not aware he was part of the Union. Well, he's not exactly. But he is an ally in the battle we face. Without his support, our uphill struggle would surely be a climb. Hopefully my talks with De Silva will help him see the light. I don't know what you think you heard. But it was a private matter, and I appreciate if you kept it to yourself. I can assure you, Monsieur Beckers, your conversation is exactly that. Yours. Then maybe we should just leave it there. Merci. If I find myself at a loss again, I shall certainly return. A pleasure to make your acquaintance. Likewise. You're not from around here, are you? My name is Hercule Poirot. I am a friend of Mademoiselle, soon to be Madame, Angeline. I see. Jacqueline Conrad. No doubt you've heard the name before. I am rather embarrassed to say I have not, Madame. No need for the Madame. I'm not married. Just call me Jackie. Oui, Jackie. Here's the thing. I'm one of those people you want to know, and not be on the wrong side of. 
Uh, perhaps it would be wise for me to remain on your good side. It's the best place to be. You wouldn't believe what a couple of positive stories can do for a family name. Or a career. And that is what you have done for the Van den Bosch family? A little help goes a long way, and from what I have seen, the ladies deserve some positive support. That's what we call eavesdropping. Uh, pardon. I didn't mean to pry. And with respect, I don't think it's really any of your business. I heard, and it doesn't surprise me. There will always be someone trying to get something out of someone else. People are only out to help themselves. That is a rather pessimistic way of thinking. But it's the truth. And in my experience, more often than not, it's someone the victim knows, and knows pretty well. You make me question those I consider friends. And maybe you should. If you have something you don't want the world knowing, just keep it to yourself. I must take my leave. Are you a guest of Mademoiselle Angeline or Monsieur Demir? Do I know you? Where are my manners? I am Hercule Poirot. The lawman. Uh, oui, Monsieur. Detective Poirot. And you are? Ernesto da Silva. A pleasure, Monsieur. I'm a man of business. I see. Is there a particular area of business that is your focus? Overseas investments, international relations. I also own a number of factories in the city. Très bien. Monsieur has many talents. We work together as partners, yes. You must know the Van den Bosch family well, then. I helped Cassandra, rather, Madame Van den Bosch, if and when she needs me. I did, but frankly I have no time for childish school fights. You are not aware of the circumstances that started it then? I heard something about a cigar. Only Felix would be petty enough to get riled up by something so menial. A cigar? Yes, Monsieur Demir had one of Felix's precious cigars. If you ask me, they won't be the real thing anyway. Distinguished gentlemen. <laughs> it was two alpha males going head to head. Master Gideon came out the victor. Surely we have passed the days where shows of unnecessary brute strength impress anyone. When it comes to the protection of a woman, we are far from it. Man will always return to their most primitive form. Mademoiselle Angeline, the Major has no place to feel threatened. Monsieur Guédion is to become her husband. And he has spent the last however many years supporting them, as he calls it, clutching on to whatever he can. Merci for your time. It has been most intriguing.
Huh. I am all yours, detective. He would say that. I mean, financially, yes. But what else does that man have to offer? I cannot imagine Madame Vandenbosch would be one to request financial help. After Edwin, the Viscount, died, the family was left in a rather unfavorable position. She wasn't requesting, chérie. She was begging. I see. Let's just keep that between us. It's a rather sore subject for her. Work with? I built it from the ground up, detective. My admiration continues to grow. While my husband, the Honorable Count de Vos, is always busy with his duties, I found myself at rather a loose end. I could not bear wasting my days with no purpose. And one day, while shopping in the city, I noticed the abundance of young women living and begging on the streets. Dirty and hungry, without a franc to their name. It is horrifying to think of how so many must live their lives while others live a life of such selfish opulence. I hope that was not a backhanded comment on the life I live, detective. Uh, far from it, Countess. You are using your wealth to better the lives of the less fortunate. It is commendable work you do. It is, isn't it? It has been a pleasure conversing. Another success. I never doubted myself. What a revelation! I must take a different approach. This will not 
get me any closer to my goal. I must act... Magnifique! I should not be surprised by my own skills. Come, my little grey cells. I cannot see the logic in this. I should not be surprised by my own skills of deduction. Order and method, that is the way. I cannot see the logic in this. This will not get... I must take a different approach if I... The pieces of the puzzle are finally coming together. I am all yours, detective. You are quite inquisitive, aren't you? I believe it is called small talk, no? There is small talk, and there is prying. I assure you that is not my intention. Monsieur, please. I know a nosy gossip hound when I see one. We can smell our own. The Major isn't worth a minute of your time, though. You are not a fan of his. I'd hit him with my fan, monsieur. Any man that can treat a lady the way he does, doesn't deserve to be in his position. And what position is that, may I ask? Lording over Cassandra like she's the help. He shouts at her like she's a stray cat that's wandered into the house. Madness. It has been a pleasure conversing. Fire away, Detective. Gedeon said they were the Majors, but I didn't think he would miss just one. Ah, it was you that took the cigar. <laughs> Me? Okay, Detective, you twisted my arm. It was me. But I didn't even get a chance to smoke it. Gideon snatched it out of my hand. Perhaps it...
Vanden Bosch residence. How may I help you? Yes. Yes, of course. Please hold for one moment. Sir? Yes, a call for you. Shall I direct it straight through to you in the study now? Very good, sir. What can I do for you? Yes, he has been here for some time now. Lady Vandenbosch has been very good to let him stay so long. Would you say he has become part of the family? He's always been very vocal about how he stands the ladies in high regards, and so he should. Merci. You have been most... Is there something else you need? It seems someone has been asking around about me. Only polite curiosity, I can assure you. Well, you would be right. Although working with the Viscount caused me much less grief. Grief, monsieur? Let's just say we didn't always see eye to eye. And if neither side is prepared to back down, there is a problem. Merci for your time. It has been most intriguing. Something I am not seeing. I must act on. Grey Sands. Some would say a lucky guess. I would say a moment of genius. What a revelation! Order and method. the logic in this. Come, my little grey cells. An 
another success. Order and method. I must take a different... Magnifique. Things are beginning to become clearer. Another success. I never doubted myself. Fire away, detective. I have a drink, but thanks anyway. I just would not like to see things get out of hand. Don't you worry about me. I've got it covered. Perhaps it is...
What can I do for you? Merci. You have... Let's make this quick, detective. Locked? That is absurd. They should be constantly coming back and forth from there if they are hiding from their work again. What is it you want in my staff area anyway? I only mention it as I was hoping to speak to some staff members. Uh, but if they are busy... Be a good fellow and make sure they aren't slacking off in there. It shan't take you long. Merci. An enchanting conversation, as always. Bonjour, mademoiselle. Oh, monsieur, you startled me. It was not my intention, mademoiselle. I was hoping to talk with a member of the staff. You are the detective? I am Detective Hercule Poirot. I only intend to take up a moment of your time. Oh, Madame Van der Bosch will be very hungry. If she knows, I'm standing talking. Allow me to worry about madame. Inga Frank, detective. From the Norse god of peace and fertility. A most beautiful name. Merci. It was my grand-mère. Oui, detective. Madame was very clear on what was to be prepared for today. Well, everything looks exquisite. But if I may be blunt, would you not benefit from some more hands? Monsieur Archie knows how busy we are, especially in the kitchen. I hate when I have to run service. Merci, mademoiselle. I shall leave you to your work.
Things are beginning to become clearer. act on is there something this will not get me I should not be surprised by my own. Oui, détective. Aya mature service. That is not for me to talk about, détective. If Monsieur Archie found out I had said anything out of turn. I am not asking you to betray your fellow staff or the family. What is said between us remains that way, mademoiselle. It's only whispers, but the last servant was caught in areas of the house they shouldn't be. Apparently, they saw something they shouldn't have. My lips are sealed, mademoiselle. Merci, ma... can I do for you? What have they done? If I have to... No, monsieur. There is not a complaint to be made. It is more the recent layoffs and extra work pressure you all seem to be under I am inquiring about. We've had to let some of them go. Let's just say their standards didn't live up to what was expected. Merci. You have been most helpful. What a revelation! Must take a different up. Let's make this quick, detective. The public rooms are not adequate space for you to celebrate my daughter's engagement. Uh, Madame, I asked only the limits, as I understand a member of the staff was let go for a similar reason. It would benefit you not to listen to whispers and rumours, officer. They did not produce a satisfactory standard of work. There is nothing more to say. It is detective, Madame. And it is just that the termination papers detail the matter and proceed to... Need I remind you again? Whose house you reside in? Merci. The pieces of the puzzle are finally coming together. Thank you. 
I must take a different Something I am not seeing. Some would say a lucky guess, I would say a moment of genius. What can I do for you? Merci. You have been... What a revelation! This quick detective. Why would I? He is to be Angeline's new husband and my new son in law. If he is taking that position seriously, he would do what he must to keep his new family happy. And to you, that means paying ransom money? It means doing what he must to protect his wife and his family name. I see you have still not learned any sense of tact or subtlety. I see no reason to beat around the bush, madame. Until you are pricked by a thorn. And until that day, I shall continue with the method that best sells me. Now, Monsieur Da Silva. Yes, he has provided some financial support when it has been required. Merci. An enchanting combat. Thank you. 
what can I do for you? Ah, perfect timing. I was about to ask that everyone move through to the dining room. <laughs> Très bien. Yes, Maman. Perhaps Turkey. I would love to see my beloved's homeland. I'm sure we will decide on somewhere. Perhaps where we are both yet to have visited. It was my crowning achievement. I am not so sure you workers would agree. Are you sure? I've definitely seen your face somewhere before. I do not believe there is another that resembles these features, or brains, at least. I've always liked the idea of sailing the West Indies. In that heat? With your complexion? Okay, but you lived in the capital at one time. Oui, mademoiselle. I spent much of my working life there. Maybe sleeping off half a bottle of whiskey. Let us not be so blasé with our opinions, brother. If you ask me, I don't believe anyone did. You're that officer! The shootout on the rooftop! Your face was all over our front page! It seems it is not only I that possesses great skills of deduction. You... Please, come quick! The Major has been murdered in his study! Monsieur et Madame, I am Detective Hercule Poirot of the Belgian Police Force. I ask that you all remain calm and in your seats. I shall begin my investigation immediately. Monsieur Sterling, please, lead the way. <laughs> 